Question eight worth nine marks. So looking at this question, we've got some form of electrolytic cell because we are got an electricity supply here. Um, fluorine gas is the most reactive metal of all metals. Um, so this is producing fluorine gas by the looks of it. Um, HF can be electrolysized to produce fluorine and hydrogen gases. Potassium fluoride is added to liquid HF to increase electrical conductivity. Obviously, the more ions you have in there, the more it conducts electricity, which is important. Uh, the diagram below shows that liquid H. Hang on, Let me just go back down here. Liquid HF, like water, is an excellent solvent for ionic compounds. Um, in the same way that water molecules in aqueous solutions form K positive and F negative aqueous, then this will dissolve in HF to form K positive and F negative fluoride ions which are written as K positive HF and F negative HF as well. First question then, label the polarities of each electrode in the circles above on the diagram. So we need to know which one is positive and negative. How am I going to work that out from this? I haven't got an electron, um, no one's telling me the electron direction. I'm going to go to my equation here and I'm going to work out which one's being oxidized and reduced. So hydrogen is always positive one, Fluorine is negative one, these guys are going to be zero. What that tells me is my hydrogen is going from an oxidation number of positive one to zero, so therefore it's being reduced. So therefore reduction is happening here, so reduction is happening here, and oxidation is happening here. So therefore in an electrolytic cell, the reduction will be negative because it's a cathode, and the oxidation will be positive because that's the anode, and that's what happens in an electrolytic cell because oxidation occurs at the anode, which in an electrolytic cell is positive. So it's that one done. Write the half equation for the reaction occurring at the anode, so the oxidation reaction, so this one here. All right, so what happens there? Well, what's gonna happen there is we're gonna, first of all, we can see that we're producing F2 gas. Um, that's the production there. What's making that is the F negative ion. So we've got F negative in this HF um, solution or whatever it's called um, there. Now I need to balance this out. So therefore I've got two fluorine there. So it has to be two fluorine ions there and two electrons negative, which should give me the marks for the half equation that occurring at the anode. Again, just thinking about that, what I did is I looked at what was being produced at my anode, and I can copy that straight across there, and then I can work backwards to work where that came from. You can also see it from here. So fluorine is coming from this F negative ion there. Um, moving on, suggest why the diaphragm shown in the diagram above is a important for the safe operation, so the diaphragm is for the electrolytic cell. Looking at this, the diaphragm here is separating the two half, well, the two sections of our cell. So what that's all about is simply just stopping the react the products from coming in contact with each other. So what this does, it stops the products coming into contact with each other. Now, um, this talks about the safe operation, so I need to think about why does this make it safe? Well, that's because H2 and F2 are highly, they're both, so I'm gonna say both, highly reactive. And therefore, it would produce a really dangerous reaction if those two actually came in contact with each other. What you're doing is you're producing one of the most toxic gases and um, one of the most reactive gases here in fluorine, another highly reactive gas here in hydrogen. So you definitely want to make sure they don't end up coming into contact because obviously here is where it's bubbling up. It's bubbling up here. You don't want some of this hydrogen coming and sneaking over here and smashing into our fluorine because it's going to pretty much not be a good time for anyone. So there we go. Explain why the carbon electrode cannot be replaced with an iron electrode. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna look at my electrochemical series because anytime I'm gonna change something on my inner cell, I'm gonna look at what's happening in my electrochemical series. Currently, I've got um, F negative as my strongest uh, reductant. If I then, let's work out where the carbon electrode actually is. 
carbon electrode is here, which is my anode. So what that's gonna do is I'm gonna add in iron solid, which is down here. So therefore, instead of my fluorine reacting as my strongest reductant in this system, I'm gonna have my iron solid reacting as my strongest reductant. That means I'm not gonna get any fluorine. So what's gonna happen is the iron solid, I need to say solid because it could be an iron ion. The iron solid would become the strongest reductant and be oxidized in pref <coughs> excuse me, preference to the F negative HF. Okay. So that's one aspect there. That means the, um, so three marks, dot points coming up here. That means that the F2 gas would not be produced. Produced. Um, and I would say that instead the F solid would um, react to produce uh, F, what is it going to produce? Let's have a look. Uh, F2 positive, F2 positive, Fe2 positive. Um, and that's going to be dissolved in my HF as well, probably. So the idea here that we're just simply saying, all right, if I replace my carbon with my iron, I go to my electrochemical series, work out what's going to change in my reaction. So there, and I clearly state what is no longer produced and what is produced. Um, and that should give me my three marks again, three dot points, giving me three marks for that question. Last question is a calculation question by the looks of it. Calculate the volume of F2 gas measured at standard laboratory conditions. That would be produced from a current of 1.5 amps. So therefore we're gonna go into a bit of electrochemistry in terms of that type of stuff. So what are my things? I got Q equals IT. I got Q equals N of electrons times F. I'm gonna to start to play around with these. So Q equals IT, I've got IT here. So therefore that's gonna be equal to my 1.5 times two hours, two times 60 to give it minutes, to six seconds is there. So therefore that is gonna be equal to, turn this bad boy on, point times two times 60 times 60 gives me 10800. All right, so that's my um, charge in my cell. I'm going to then find, use this equation to find my number of moles of electrons. So number of moles of electrons is gonna be equal to Q over F. Um, because that is that divided by Faraday's constant, 96500 divided by 96500. That gives me my number of moles of electrons, which is um, passing through this cell um, there. Now I need to use my electrons to find my fluorine gas. If I go back to my um, equation here, I can see that um, I'm gonna have half as much fluorine produced as I do electrons. So I need two electrons for every um, mole of fluorine. So therefore my number of moles of fluorine gas equals 0 0.112 divided by two, which I'm running out of pen here, divided by two is gonna be 0 0.05596 mole there and then I need to go into my um, volume at standard level of conditions so I can use my VM so therefore my volume equals number of moles times my VM which is 0 0.05596 times VM which I can't remember what it is it's in here I think my units one of the ones that I can never remember but my Units are constantly here. Vm is 24.8. So therefore times by 24.8 is times by 24.8. One 
0.3878 liters. And I've done way too many significant figures there, so I'm gonna work backwards and work out how many I should have. That's three sig figs, that's three sig figs. Um, I'm gonna to go to three sig figs, so 1.39 liters is my answer there. And that should be pretty much done. Um, fun question, a few interesting ones thrown in there. Lots of preamble um, for the question. Realistically, there's a question part C, that's a, that's a go-to answer for when you wanna talk about why we're separating two things in an electrolytic cell. Um, part D, pretty much a go-to in terms of what's gonna change in my cell. I go to my electrochemical series. And part E is a, a stock standard um, using my equations to work through to find an answer. So um, again, as soon as I see that it's a calculation in electrolytic cells, um, these equations come straight out and I start to work through to get to what I need to find. Um, hopefully that's helped you and I'll get on to the next last two questions in this exam shortly.